On the 18th day of June, 1815, both horse and foot did bold advance, most glorious to be seen. Both horse and foot did bold advance, and the bugle horn did blow. The sons of France we made to dance on the plains of Waterloo. Hello everyone, so this is the other project that I was working on that I didn't include in my uh, latest wargaming update. It's um, a 6mm model of Hougamore and uh, the buildings themselves, all the structures, the walls and the, and the buildings and so on, I printed on my uh, 3D printer and the, using the uh, STL files from Najavit's model bow um, very pleased with the way it's turned out uh, but I wanted to have a little as I say I can probably as I said on my earlier video I could probably turn this into a good half hours if I if I allow myself so I'll try not to ramble on too much um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about um, six mil buildings in in general and uh, this particular model in particular so I'm going to start uh, by talking a little bit about the STL files themselves and Najibit's model bow um, I really like um, it's, it, you can you can find him on YouTube. It, Jens N, I think, um, his YouTube channel is, and he puts up um, videos of his various projects. Um, so there'll be links to his uh, 3D uh, STL file service on 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 that if you want to um, you know pursue that further. But he, he has a massive amount of um, files for sale now uh, and I really like all his all his work I, I tend to, I tend to buy things uh, through Kickstarter from him now and he has this sort of um, offer where if you if you pay a certain amount you you then get back files um, thrown into the Kickstarter so that's the way I've been steadily uh, improving you know increasing my collection of um, STL files from him. Um, yes, yeah, so I really do like them, but um, at the same time, you know, I didn't find this particularly easy to uh, group together. Every, you know, the, everything is um, individual, so the roof of the great barn, the great barn itself, separate. Um, the, the sort of buildings around it are separate. The walls, each each length of wall is a separate print and when you come to kind of assemble it all together you find that it doesn't actually quite uh, quite work and then if you go back and then look at um, his images on his website um, he's actually got he hasn't he hasn't got it in a completely sort of rectilinear um, pattern he's actually got the the, the great barn pointing a little bit sort of that way and this uh, area of stables and I uh, um, can't remember what else this was used for um, farm buildings anyway they're, they're sort of at a bit of an angle as well so the whole thing isn't a complete uh, rectangle it, it's, it's sort of uh, joins together a little bit up the north end this is the north of the the building um, and I, th I thought that looked odd it, do it doesn't uh, match my um, you know sort of impressions looking at maps and things in particular um, Mark Adkins Waterloo Companion has a lot of maps of Hougamon I'm going I'm to show you show you some of those pages a little bit later on so um, I what I did in the end was um, I printed off an additional length of walling 
Um, doesn't really make much, you know, difference, but um, to the to the to the overall sort of appearance of the building. But that that little length of wall there is actually um, an additional print that I just put in because there was a gap there. Um, and I thought that was the best way of doing it. I mean, there would have been other ways of maybe um, having the chateau a lot closer to the great barn and having that at an angle possibly. Um, but I found that was the way of keeping everything, you know, with parallel lines and right angles and, uh, and trying to keep the appearance as close as I could to, you know, what I thought um, the buildings would have looked like at, you know, at the time of the Battle of Waterloo. Um, so yeah, that's everything on the STL files, uh, I think I wanted to mention, but um, I wanted to go on and talk a little bit about, um, yeah, talk a little bit about what Hugemont actually looked like and, and is this an accurate representation of, you know, what the building looked like. And kind of um, linking the two together, are uh, the these um, lengths of sort of balustrade here that sort of formed uh, part of the formal garden? Um, so these on in in real life, as far as I can see, as far as I can tell from looking at various pictures online and various books. The, these would have been um, jutting up to the what's that the fa the farmer's building, um, the corner there. So um, that's not possible to do on this with this model. So in a way, it's another it's another kind of not criticism, but it's another observation on um, Najibet's model bows files that if you print these at the lengths that they are intended they clearly don't fit between the wall here and the farmer's building um, so I have kind of moved them further forward um, and had them so that one is what this one here is jutting up against the wall there um, and then the other one is just on the edge of the cardboard base that a plastic card that I've I've put put all this on and then I printed off another section of wall um, to go around uh, here and then join up with the farm buildings up here um, so this is certainly not how um, Najibit's model bow intended the print to be you know the various parts to be assembled and it's certainly not how um, Hugemont would have looked. But this area here, this gate here, is kind of like the garden, the gate to the formal gardens. And they would have stretched a lot further as well, into you know, in towards the direction of the camera, um, and then extended even further out into uh, orchards and various bits of woodland and so on. Um, so, yeah, I've taken definitely taken liberties there um, and definitely taken liberties in terms of adding this bit of wall here. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to come, 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 kind of come to some sort of compromise on how big a footprint you want to you want these buildings to occupy. Um, more on that later. Um, the other thing about the appearance is that um, a great deal of Hugemon burnt down in um, during the battle. Um, the, the bits that are sort of still that survived and are still extant are, are the south. All these buildings along the south, in particular the south gate, um, and the great barn survived. Uh, possibly this building here survived as well, I'm not sure. 
but um, everything, the chateau, not the small chapel, that survived, but the chateau and this tower, um, the farmer's building, um, the buildings along the south side and, and the southeast uh, were destroyed as well. Um, so it is hard to, you know, it is hard to get a very accurate depiction of the buildings um, and if you if you kind of uh, search on the internet or look through various books and again I'm, go I'm going to show you some images later um, you know you'll find lots of different interpretations of what Huguen actually looked like um, the, the only thing that I'd really sort of uh, you can say is if you were to look at this you would instantly recognize it as Hugemon. So it's not, you know, it's not possible to get a 100% accurate representation of it. Um, but I think these buildings do a pretty good job. Another, another thing as well is that the, you know, again, going back to the files themselves, is that the surface, surfaces of all the, all the buildings um, are in the main um, etched to look like brickwork. So I, I haven't attempted to make any of the buildings look as though they have whitened walls, you know, I'm sure they, a lot of them were covered in lime wash and, and were white. Um, but I chose be, partly because of, of the, uh, you know, the way the, the files are, I've chosen to make most of them either red brick or kind of gray, gray stone, you know, and I haven't, haven't attempted to make, uh, any of it look white and um, pretty sure that you could argue fairly um, you know definitively that some of the buildings were white in particular the um, the gardener's building which was in this this end of the uh, building here um, you know adjacent to the the sort of tunneled south south gate um, there are prints you know of can almost contemporary after the battle you know showing scenes of the battle um, and that is shown in white so pretty sure that would have been white but, but I like I like the overall effect of the uh, of doing everything in red brick and, and grey stone anyway so that's that's the way I've I've shown it and as I say it's not it's not intended to be 100% accurate anyway um, and then finally um, I did want to talk a little bit about the footprint of this because it is huge, um, six millimeter scale, and um, Najewitz model bells buildings are all they haven't they haven't been um, designed for war gamers um, specifically, so they are all kind of an accurate scale. Um, and it does mean that they you know especially when you group together a lot of buildings like this that they form a very um, they take up a very large area they have a very large footprint um, that, that that gives you a problem in terms of war gaming um, because unless you're um, using rules that have a sort of one figure represents one man um, approach so in other words skirmish war games you're always going to have a problem with what to do about the space on the table that the buildings that you're using occupy um, so you know this this is in certain rules would would be a city almost if you played something like Blucha um, this is a massive area um, and it would occupy on the table, as I say, it would, it would be the size of a city. But I've always had problems with um, reducing the size of buildings down even further, um, you know, so that they're smaller than the, uh, the scale of the figures that you're using. I mean, some people do come up with that solution, um, particularly 15mm war gamers, often have their buildings um, 
represented in 10 mil and that's not too jarring for the eye but I find with other scales it just doesn't doesn't work for me personally I don't like to do it so I do I do like to do what I've done here which is to print um, print the buildings in the scale uh, that I'm actually going to use for my wargaming figures as well um, so how do you get around the problem on a board gaming table? Well, one way would be to um, reduce the size of the footprint whilst keeping the scale of the buildings, if that makes sense. So you, you have to mess with the proportions of the buildings and that's quite a skill to do um, a good example of someone who has done it very successfully um, would be total battle miniatures so he sells um, six millimeter buildings for all of the kind of hundred days campaign um, and I'll show you his version of Hugemon. Um I'll put that up on the screen now so you can see what he's done and he's kind of condensed it all down. Um, so again, you know, you instantly recognise that it is Hugemon. But um, he's made everything... Um, it sort of distorted the proportions, not so that they look strange, but so that they, they fit into a much smaller area and are playable with. So that is one way of doing it, and that's a perfectly reasonable way. Um, I'm not sure that I would be capable of doing that. You would have to. You would have to go really right back to basics with these STL files and um, start to kind of uh, slice out areas of wall and so on. You couldn't just reduce one or two, you know, sort of uh, dimensions of it and hope that it would look, you know, acceptable. It just wouldn't. Um, so I couldn't do that myself using these files um, uh, and the other the only other thing that you can do with in wargaming terms if you want to keep an accurate scale is to treat the buildings as though they're just um, decoration on the tabletop and not actually play play them in the game so they're just there with sort of eye candy um, so you could put this on the table and play around it if you if you were particularly worried um, a good example of that would be uh, fire and fury if any of you have ever played that um, the buildings that you just move around if they get in the way you move them nudge them across so that they don't affect the uh, affect line of sight and they don't affect movement um, and that's that's another thing that I like to do um, is just to say they're on the table but they're not unless they're, unless they're part of a particular scenario they're on the table but they don't um, they don't have any effect on the game and if they get in the way just move them um, so that's another way of going about it right uh, I think I've waffled on long enough now then so I just want to go to um, Mark Adkins Waterloo Companion and comment a little bit on some of the pages in that to show you what I mean. Okay so this is Mark Adkins excellent book The Waterloo Companion. I've just got a few pages marked here to show you. Um, this one um, there's two things here let's just zoom in a little bit more one is this image of another model. I'm not sure what scale this is in, um, but it's another model of representing Hugemon. And you can see again, um, slightly different kind of configuration of the buildings and the um, modelers, in, you know, interpretation of, of where things were. But I'm sure things like this wall that he's got going entirely along the sort of eastern side here, um, this is where that balustrade uh, sort of was going up to the farmer's house there. He's actually got a wall. So he's taken another um, view again. And, you know, every, everything is acceptable, really. There's no, 
you know you have to you have to work around the limitations of the scale and the and the space that you're you have available and so on and the other thing to show you on this page that I will be you know showing you on other pages as well is that um the actual kind of area that the buildings occupied um is a lot less than the actual area of what was you know what historians describe when they're describing the battle as the area of Hugemon that was defended so um I, I was in the um <coughs> excuse me in the national army museum again recently i had another look at um one of Cybone's two models of the Battle of Waterloo is in the National Army Museum and it's incredible how small a, a part of the entire area of Hugemon was actually occupied by those buildings um, and this is another way you can get around having a large footprint you know for them in a war game is that you can use the buildings to represent the entire area which was walled, so it was defensible. There's a wall running around here and here, and a hedge on the south side. Um, so it's a very defensible area, and they, you know much of the fighting took place here, not actually in the buildings themselves. I mean, obviously, you know there are important incidents that happened in the buildings, like the burning down of the chateau and so on, and the holding of the north gate, um, closing it once some of the French had managed to get through into that area um but if you took the, if you took the model and just used that to represent the whole <laughs> then it does sort of um, balance that issue of footprints again a little bit so it's another another way of getting around that problem um, and then the other page i wanted to show you is really just to reiterate that same um same issue um don't think there's anything well kind of there's all these there's all these maps here where the same same point that's the area that you know more or less of that model that i've just shown you and this is the area of the formal gardens alone and then you've got this area of um orchards and so on which is just colossal so um you know it does it does balance that whole point about scale and footprints and so on and this is another just another quite nice um little illustration of the buildings and again you can see slightly different um, approach to where that wall was that's joining uh, this building here to the farmer's house it doesn't actually meet it at the corner and he's got hedges there instead of those um, balustrades you know so there's lots of ways you know it becomes it becomes a lot more open to interpretation as you move away from the buildings that survived the battle um that's it anyway I've, i have gone on long enough definitely so um i'll conclude there and just maybe put up a few photographs of the model again to give you a closer look at it from different angles thanks for watching on the 18th day of June, 1815, both horse and foot did bold advance, most glorious to be seen. Both horse and foot did bold advance, and the bugle horn did blow. The sons of France, we made to dance on the plains of Waterloo.